<laughs> uh, let's, let's freaking get on with it. So, okay. So, uh, I'm going to be uh, talking about first speeches. And when I say first speeches, I'm talking about uh, speeches that brought people onto the scene, right? So we have uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, mid-90s UN speech. We have Barack Obama's uh, 2004 uh, Democratic National Convention keynote speech. We have uh, Stacey Abrams, a young Stacey Abrams, gave a speech to labor organizers uh, back in the day. These are all great examples of first speeches. I'm not going to be talking about these ones. Um, but I, I am going to be talking about a first speech that's very near and dear to my heart, though. It's going to be close reading. Uh, we're going to do a close reading of my eighth grade graduation speech. Yes. Because pursuing a career as a speech writer is not self-aggrandizing enough. Yeah. Hey, leader or titan of industry, you know who can tell your story better than you? Me! Um, that's my pitch. I'm a fraud, uh, but we're not going to talk about that. That's beyond the scope of this presentation, me being a fraud. Anyway, so here's the speaker profile. Uh, me in eighth grade. So what do we know about me in eighth grade? I existed in the years 2009 to 2010, so my contemporaries were the movie Avatar, a Senate Democratic supermajority, and the swine flu, um, which just really was hot back then. Um, I wore t-shirts with guitars on them despite not knowing how to play a guitar, and whatever that tells you about my personality. Uh, I was a militant atheist whose Facebook political views were Bill Maher, all lowercase, a link that went to nothing. Um, I was the only boy for whom the Justin Bieber swoopy hair thing did not work. For everyone else, it was foolproof. Uh, we have some other points here. So that gives you the idea of what, what that era was like. Um, it's a period piece, really, what we're doing here. Okay, so I am now going to, there's a six step process of, uh, of great speeches that I made up um, that were, well, that's not, actually, that's not true. It's, uh, it, we're, this is a specific uh, thing here. We have some things that are actually uh, genuinely from uh, great speeches. We are going to look at my speech through the lens of great speeches and see how it holds up. Um, so here we go. Uh, step one, introduce a problem. Okay. So the problem is that I dropped my phone from the podium before I started the speech. The solution, definitely just look down and stare at it without acknowledging what happened at all. Right? Good idea. Okay, so we've done that. Okay, now that we've introduced the problem, we must release tension with humor. Uh, so let's see how I was doing as a joke writer at the age of 14. Three years ago, uh, Charlie and Johnson was still a young boy. <laughs> and now, I'm leaving it a slightly taller young boy. Alright, first of all, you'll notice that I, I yelled into microphones just as much then as I do now, but, uh, alright, so what do we have? Uh, okay, wow. Uh, guys, I freaking nailed it. Uh, hot crowd, hot crowd. Uh, I looked at the camera with this smarmy expression as if to say, yeah, I'm killing it right now. Just no humility whatsoever, then or now. Um, as with all good jokes, uh, my punchline was almost identical to the setup, such that most of the laughs were released early. Uh, get the laughs out of the way. We don't want to save those for the end. Uh, know your audience. That joke appealed directly to the audience of 40-something suburban moms that made up the entire crowd. Okay, great. So step three um, of a great speech, identify with your audience. Make some kind of direct connection with them. Uh, you know, I had that banter with you at the beginning of this remarks, and oh, you trust me so much more now. So um, here we go. I identified with the audience. What well, makes Johnson the best? What's it for us to say Persian? Well, first of all, Persian mascots. I feel I need to just explain this diagram. So this is me, that's Chandler. Uh, the moms were freaking out. They thought it was so funny. Um, so, dang! When in doubt, just rip on other children, apparently. Dude, my middle school kids so are superior to yours. For the record, the mascot for Pershing Middle School is the panda, a majestic animal for which I have nothing to respect. But unfortunately, I was out for blood, so there was nothing to be done. Um, it, this is true. When gaining credibility with a crowd, it helps if you have a common enemy, like families who go to a different school because they live one mile away from where you live. Those jerks. Okay. 
Step four, you illustrate your thesis with a personal anecdote. Now, this is where it gets serious. Enough silliness. This is where it gets serious. Uh, you, you have a thesis, and uh, by connecting with it personally, it, it's, it's, people don't want to be lectured to. They want to hear a personal anecdote. So here we go. Last year, Mr. Weed would come on the announcements all the time. Completely serious. Unyielding in his mind as to how important passing the tax was. And he knew just how important that was. Because that same year, we saw Mr. Weed from that soul. Incredulous. Uh, so the thesis here is we're graduating and Johnson is good. Um, the anecdote is in exchange for improved standardized test performance across the school population, our principal agreed to crank that soldier boy. Um, again, this is a period piece. You understand that was a popular dance at the time. <laughs> the only thing you care about at this point in the speech is there a video of Mr. Week cranking that soldier boy? The answer is yes. Your follow-up question is: Are you going to show us that video now? And the answer is yes. So step five of great speeches is I make you watch this video of Prince Boy and Crank and that's all you want. So this was a very important moment for me because up until this point in my life, I believed that I was the whitest person on earth. Not, not true. Barely, but not true. Okay, so what do we have? Okay, I'll admit this is not totally relevant to speech writing what we did just now. But like, I guess I just needed to emphasize that this actually happened. I lived through this. And that is my cross to bear. Also, I have to note that this was simulcast on every TV at the school. Like it was the moon landing. It was a big deal. All right. We get to the end of the speech. We've got all this information. It's stewing, right? But we need to synthesize. We need to... What is the big takeaway here, right? So here I go. I'm synthesizing my remarks up to that point. <laughs> I am so happy to have made those decisions in the same building with all of you. And a principal that was willing to correct that soldier. So my conclusion, I brought together the two main ideas of the speech, which again were Johnston is good, and at one point Mr. We Cracked That Soldier Boy. The two ideas I'm trying to bring together here. Um, my tag, I capped it with an irrelevant Napoleon Dynamite reference because I'm a 14 year old in 2010, what do you expect? <laughs> my exit, a dramatic farewell wave in an apparent allusion to President Nixon. <laughs> I'm not sure what I was doing there. Um, also, I must stress, I did not resign from the 8th grade, so again, no reason to wave like Richard Nixon on the way out. Okay, so what are the takeaways here? This is me. Uh, so you have to know your audience. You need to make a clear argument and synthesize at the end. Um, this speech was probably my peak, and I'm still, you know, reconciling through that. 2010 was a simpler time for all of us. I'm speaking about Thanks, 